Hello, animal lovers. Welcome to the Zoology Girl channel. And, well, I originally had something different planned for the video this week, which I'm still going to do that one. But this info I ran into is kind of taking priority right now. And so, I'm starting a new series on this channel called Strawbebe Side Notes. Hope you enjoy. If you've been anywhere on social media, by now you've probably heard of anti-vaxxers. People who erroneously believe, for many different strange reasons, that vaccines are the devil. It was already horrible enough when it was their kids, but I hadn't thought this was really my topic to cover, since this is a channel devoted to animal science, and there are a lot of people already talking about it. But then I discovered a side of this that hasn't been covered much. People refusing to get their pets vaccinated. Yes, that's right. People are scared of their dogs having adverse side effects from their vaccines, such as... Doggy autism. Okay, first of all, we already know the article that stated vaccines cause autism had biased and fabricated results that came from a small, non-randomly selected group of children resulting in insignificant statistics, and his methods were not replicatable because he was actively trying to get a specific result. All of those things are something you do not do as a self-respecting scientist, especially the last one. You never go into a study aiming for specific results. You can have a hypothesis, but the goal should ultimately be to answer a question, not to prove yourself right. The man lost his license over this. That should show you how bad this is. Secondly, Autistic people are wonderful, and the idea that someone is better off with a deadly disease than autism is evil. Screw you. And finally, dogs having autism is only being speculated right now. And even if they could, you wouldn't be able to tell, because not even doctors can tell. Dogs don't behave like humans. They aren't wired like us socially and only have the mental capacity of a three to five year old. You can't apply human behavioral symptoms to a dog. In fact, the only symptom they think might be a sign is tail chasing. You know, the thing that dogs are expected to do. <laughs> but vaccines are unnatural. They're full of chemicals. My pet can just learn to fight them much better than natural way and have a stronger immune system. It's my pet anyways. You have no right to tell me how to care for them. I've raised little Fru-Fru since he was a pup. Oh geez, one of these guys. Look, Helen, you may know your pet Fru-Fru well, but you literally don't understand anything about vaccines. Get out of my face. Yeah? Well, you're not a vet either. How do you know any better than me? Well, yes, I'm not a vet, but I am a biology student who studied mammology, cell biology, microbiology, histology, genetics, chemistry, and organic chemistry, where I got A's in all but histology, as well as had labs for almost every one of them, including where I actually genetically modified bacteria. Have you done any of that? I don't think so. So I think I understand a lot more than you do. In fact, I suppose I should give you a little lesson on how vaccines work, because they're a lot more natural than you think. You may be a straw man, but in this situation, I need something to work off of. I don't need. Too bad class is in session. So how do vaccines work? Well, first, how does the body respond to viruses normally? When a virus infects the body, it injects its DNA into a cell, which gets incorporated into the cell's DNA. The cell is then forced to make more and more viruses and viral proteins until it explodes and the viruses spread to infect other cells. However, when the viruses are being made, cells will attach some of the viral proteins to the outside of the membrane instead of normal marker proteins that tell the immune system the cell is part of the body and supposed to be there. This will cause the cell to catch the attention of killer T cells. Killer T cells are special cells that jobs are to look out for cells harboring viruses and kill them. However, when fighting a new disease, it's hard for them to immediately recognize something is up and start destroying cells and send signals to the rest of the immune system to put it on high alert and 
produce antibodies to fight back, so the virus has time to proliferate. Once the sickness is over and the virus is defeated, memory T cells take up information on the proteins that were used to recognize and fight the foreign bodies, because the next time they're prepared. A vaccine usually either contains antibodies, genetic material, and proteins needed for the body to learn how to recognize it in the future, sort of like a wanted poster, or it contains a neutered form of the virus that can't inject its DNA into the body cell, gets introduced so that the killer T cells and other immune cells can poke it with a stick until they learn how to deal with it. It's essentially the same process, except taking out the middleman of actually getting sick. It also does have some chemicals that act as preservatives. Ha! You see? No interrupting me! But those chemicals can be found in much higher doses in even the most organic, all-natural foods that you can eat, like pears and fresh fish, and do not cause humans or other large animals harm unless they have a weak or sensitive immune system, or they have an allergic reaction, which is about as rare as winning the lottery, and usually not the fault of the vaccine itself. And these preservatives are needed, because speaking from experience of working in a genetics lab, all it takes to contaminate pure water or another common solution beyond use for this kind of stuff is leaving the lid off a container of it for a few hours. My lab lost 20 bacterial plates that way to fungus. Imagine what could happen to something even more fragile, like pure proteins. And imagine what would happen if that was then injected into your body. But these chemicals could cause cancer! No, they don't. And even if they could, the minute amount of chemicals in them is so tiny and has so little effect on the body that unless you are allergic to them or have an overly sensitive immune system, as I prefaced, literally being outside for more than 15 minutes is more likely to cause cancer. In fact, they are more likely to prevent cancer than cause it. Because when a virus enters your cells, sometimes the DNA stays dormant or inserts into the wrong coding area and can cause cancerous mutations to that cell's DNA. An example would be this. Say you have an oncogene. That's a gene that if allowed to be read and copied for proteins without anything controlling it, would cause the cell to become cancerous and form a tumor. For these genes, there are usually others that when read and copied into RNA, instructions for making protein, makes a protein that stops the oncogene from being coded. However, if viral DNA gets placed inside that protective gene, it stops being able to work properly. And so there will be nothing stopping the cell from reading and copying the oncogene on autopilot forever and cause cancer in the body. A good example of this is HPV and other virulent STDs. Vaccines help prevent that from happening by allowing the body to stop viruses before they can cause that kind of damage or be able to better target cells expressing viral proteins without a previous infection needing to occur that could cause these mutations. And sometimes in animals, there are legit virulent forms of cancer. I've mentioned devil facial tumor disease, but in cats, there's virulent feline leukemia. Wait, what? Yes, you heard me. Leukemia, a cancer of the blood. In felines, it is caused by a virus. And there are a hell of a lot of other really terrible diseases caused by viruses, one of which is rabies which can be passed on to you and will kill you. If you have an outdoor animal, it is imperative that you get them a rabies vaccine because once caught, it is almost always deadly, mostly because when you actually start showing symptoms, it's usually already gotten into your central nervous system, such as your brain. And fun fact, the main way humans get rabies is from dogs, either wild ones or ones that are kept outside and were bitten by common carriers, such as skunks, raccoons, foxes, or bats. Bats are actually the most common carrier. And guess what? They live everywhere. The only reason why we have so few rabies cases each year is because we vaccinate our pets. Feline viral rhinotracheitis, or FVR, is a form of herpes virus for cats, which they can get if they are let outside in an area where other infected cats have been. If they get into a fight with an infected cat, or you can give it to them by coming into contact with your cat after having come in contact with an infected cat. The virus may not directly kill your cat, but it can make them more susceptible to other dangerous respiratory diseases during the active period of the virus, which can be fatal. And guess what? While the active period may only last a few weeks, this shit stays in your cat forever. 
and can be reactivated when they get stressed, which can also make their immune system partially compromised. And there is no cure for this virus once caught. And probably most devastating for dogs is parvovirus. This virus attacks the digestive tract and can cause fevers, hypothermia, bloody diarrhea, vomiting, and in young dogs, often death. Dogs get this disease by sniffing and chewing on things that have been infected with it. And there's nothing a puppy likes to do more than chew. And the really horrifying thing about it is, in the home environment, the virus can survive for days. But some places outside, like in a dog park, it can survive for years in the soil. If one dog owner does not clean up after their dog well enough and their dog is carrying the disease, then they can spread it to any dog that visits that park for years to come. And that, my friends, is terrifying. But if I take my dog to the vet, they can treat them for it, right? Or I can use my own health and wellness methods alternative sites have given me. Maybe, but it could very well be too late by then. Here's the thing about animals, Helen. They don't like showing you that they're sick. In an animal's instinctual mind, showing weakness means that something might take advantage of that and kill them. And they don't understand the concept that the vet wants to help them. All they know is that the vet is a human with cold hands that touches them in places they don't want them to and sticks things up their butt. And their human takes them there when they feel bad. They don't want to show you when they're sick so that when they finally do, it generally means that they're so far gone it might be too late. And while there's some merit to traditional medicine, modern alternative medicine is often worse as it usually is untested slash test results are not cited and available for people to view. Unregulated by any real health organization that could punish the makers for corruption and or created by people with little to no veterinary or health training to the point where they wouldn't even be able to accurately diagnose your animal. The reason why a lot of them don't claim they have side effects is because there's not enough research on them to find out if they have any, or they aren't required by law to tell you. Do you really want to trust your animal to a supposed health expert that wouldn't be able to tell you what a crop or a cecum is, or only use methods with little to no research on them, showing any signs they do anything more than a sugar pill at best, and trust all that over people who have studied years to know what they're doing and use methods that have been proven time and again to be extremely effective. I'm not saying you shouldn't be skeptic of information being fed to you. It's good to be skeptic, but there's a big difference between being skeptic and being in denial of the truth and putting not only your animal in harm's way, but animals and other people's care at risk. So I'm begging you, please, because your pet can't make decisions for their own health. Please, please, please get them their vaccines. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing or supporting me on Patreon. If you want to join a community on studying a bunch of different sciences and topics, consider clicking the invite link to the study Q&T Discord in the description below. But most importantly, have a wonderful day.